Hello, uh, welcome back to Pave the Way Podcast. My name is Toussaint and this is uh, episode 9, which is episode 6 on our new series, Journey with the Lord. And um, today we will be looking together a topic that we called That Pride Has Got to Die. It's, it has got to do with pride. And uh, <clears throat> if we're going to be on the journey with the Lord, we have to kill our pride. We have to kill uh, this thing that pushes us to do <clears throat> as we feel or that tells us that we deserve some things and uh, that we are better than other people. So I was Googling what a pride person is and the result came in as a, a feeling that you respect yourself and you deserve to be respected by others, which if you take a look, is not a bad thing. But honestly, if you're not careful with this, you would find yourself in a burning hell. Pride is a very dangerous thing. Uh, I want to share a testimony myself. Uh, it's things that I've been going on, uh, going through. Uh, yesterday I was praying and uh, uh, my ego kicked in. So I was complaining to God, saying, ah, Father, I serve you, I do this and this. Look, today I'm fasting, but why, why, why aren't things going well in my life? Why are these and these and these things wrong in my life? Why can't you fix this and this and this? And God got offended. And, you know, what's even worse is I knew better than complaining to God. I've, I've preached about it. But pride is a very dangerous thing, man. It makes you feel like you deserve more. So God had to set me down and check me again and say, Yo, well, I made you. You, you, you. I tell you what to do. You don't tell me what to do. So most of the times people that serve God struggle with pride a lot because we believe we deserve more than pagans or people that are not saved. But honestly, we don't. If there's one thing that is guaranteed for a Christian, is persecution. That's one thing. People are going to hate us. That's, that's a guarantee. Blinks, blessings may come and go. But we don't get a saying whether we get blessed or don't. If we're righteous, the Bible said, God will prosper us. The Bible said, if we seek the kingdom and his righteousness, everything else will be added unto us. That's good. But that doesn't give us right to stand before God and say, we serve you and we deserve in this and this and this. And it killed me so much because I knew better. And I found myself doing it. It was like Peter. Peter knew who Jesus was. But then he said, I don't know this guy. When, when he was about to be crucified. When he was going through trials. So that was me. So pride is a devil, man. Pride is a very dangerous thing. Because after complaining, God had to sit, uh, God sat me down and showed me how He has blessed me in life, how my whole family is doing good. Uh, he, he just protected my mom. My mom just went through a surgery and she's doing okay, she's recovering every day. And He was showing me people that just lost their parents and people that are struggling in life. And all these guys are, they are saved, they know Christ, they pray every day, but they're going through with that. And then I, I, I was there looking down. I was like, why was I doing? Why was I doing? So be careful, man. Be careful. I know today you think you have your life together. You have a good job. You drive a nice car. Uh, people love you. When you, when you, when, when you step in, the, the environment changes. All the tension shifts to you. And you feel like you have it all figured out. God, you don't need God in your life. Man. Just so you remember, that breath, that breath is what makes everything matter. And who gave you that breath? The, all the attention you're getting today is because you're breathing. Your friends, I'm sure you've seen friends that died. I'm sure you have friends that died that never did anything wrong. 
so God showed me a few verses that I would like to share with you today. <clears throat> so we're going to, uh, we'll start with uh, Pro, uh, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Uh, just one second, I'll get there in a minute. So Proverbs verse 11, uh, sorry, uh, chapter 11, verse 2. It says, when pride, come, when pride comes, then comes disgrace, but with humility comes wisdom. You see? And then let's go again to 13, 10. It says, uh, uh, that's Proverbs 13, 10. It says, where there is, where there is, a, where there is strife, there is pride, but wisdom is found in those who take advice. Man, one thing I've learned is everything that we could have ever asked for was put in this book, the Bible. The Bible has everything we ask for. The Bible has everything we need. The Bible has it all. We just choose to ignore it and do our own thing. There's a verse in the Bible that we choose not to look because we are scared that if we look, God is going to save us. I've seen people do that. Like they know. I've, I used to do that. I used to be one of those guys. Listen, I knew God. I knew the gospel. And I was running away from everywhere they were preaching because I didn't want to get saved. But saving actually benefits me. You know, one day God told me that he doesn't need a man to be a God. So whether you say there's no God, whether you say God doesn't exist, this is Christianity is fake, whatever, that doesn't change the fact that God is God. It doesn't change it. Well, honestly, what I'm doing right here is telling you this world is going to burn one day. Take shelter. Take shield, bro. Come. I'm trying to rescue you from the worst thing that this world is ever going to see. But your pride won't let you. But your pr you, you still feel like you, can, you won't let go of those ladies that are calling you handsome. Or those late nights, people that are telling you, you can dance, man, you can dance. Like, you are popular. Huh? You are too popular to, to actually give God attention. I'm so sorry, I'm going deep today because... That was deep with me as well. Well, to, in today's society, it is normal to be proud. And I think everybody wants respect. You know, there's a saying that says, yeah, you first get the money, then power, then respect. And it sounds good in the world. In fact, everyone, every, everyone wants these things. People are killing one another over these things. Listen, there's no morality anymore. People are not scared to go out there and make an album rapping about killing brothers, killing one another, having sex with multiple women, drugs, things like that, just so they can get paid. Just so they can flex on, on us, flying private, and showing us things. And our head is hurting because we don't have these things. But we don't know what these guys are going through to fly. Man, we need to calm down. John said it. Listen, let's read. <clears throat> let's read chapter. Uh, let's read in John three, chapter thirty. Okay. So John three, thirty to thirty one. It says, "He must become greater. I must become less. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is from." The one who is uh, uh, the one who is from earth belongs to the earth, and speaks, and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from above, the one who comes from heaven, is above all. This guy deserves all the respect. This is who we should be bowing to. This is who we should be respecting. This is who we should be fearing. Not people. Not because you have the latest designer. Not because you got it. Listen, no, no, that doesn't. Scare me. I was listening to a podcast. Uh, it was a Kanye West podcast with Joe Rogan. This guy said, I fear Lord. I tremble before God. I have absolute fear of God. And I fear nothing else. This is how we should be. This is how we should all be. 
And if you are scared of God, we shouldn't be treating ourselves the way we do. We should be scared of him because he's, he's, he's not one of us. Listen, what I'm saying is, as a Christian, we need to tuck in our pride. As people that are on a journey with the Lord, our pride has to die. We don't deserve nothing. People kill, people die every day. What, what, about, the, what about the guy that just died? If, if, if he was to say, why did I die? What did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this death? Right now, tomorrow, we, we're starting a um, hundred days of remembrance in Rwanda for people that died, uh, Tutsis that died in genocide. What did those guys do to deserve that kind of death? Machete just because of how you were born? These people had families. They're orphans that were left with no family at all. And they're still praying. What is your excuse, though? What is your excuse? What did you lose that you cannot humble yourself and, play, and pray? Uh, <clears throat> John the Baptist was a cousin to Jesus. And he knew his purpose in life. He knew he was born to pave the way for Jesus and he was doing that until Jesus came. He actually baptized Jesus. So if, if, if there's anybody that deserved respect, if there's anybody that deserved pride, it was John the Baptist. But look what he says. He must become greater. Where I, uh, where I must become less. This guy knew something that we don't know. He knows all the glory belongs to God. If you try to steal his glory, you're going to die. The glory. Bro. You know he had to die for him to be glorified today. But you want to take everything that God has done for you and take credit for. It's very dangerous. And I'm telling you this because I've done that myself. And I know how dangerous it is. The story of John is real, man. It happened. It actually happened. I'm not lying. But look, look, look what I'm trying to get to again, okay? This is how dangerous pride can be. You see, John knew who Jesus was. He just said he must become great while, while I become less, okay? But if we go to Matthew 11, chapter 2 to 5. This was John going through hardships, okay? This, is, this was John going through it. When John was in prison, heard about the deeds of the Messiah, he sent his disciples to ask him, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? You see, when you're in a breaking, when you're being crushed, it's hard to lose your faith and grow your pride and be like, I serve you. I am faithful to you. Why are you not saving me? Look what Jesus said. Go back and report to John what you hear and see. The blind receive sight. The lame walk. Those who have uh, leprosy are cleansed. The deaf hears. The dead are raised. And the good news is proclaimed to the poor. Blessed is anyone who does not stumble on account of me. Jesus didn't have no business explaining. Saying, you know, I'm, I'm just saving these people. Uh, as soon as I'm done, I'll come save you. No, it was like. Go and tell him, I am God. I am the Messiah. I'm still healing people. I'm still touching people. And I'm still walking. I'm still blessing people. You either wait for me or you don't. <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> this is amazing. John knew who Jesus was. John grew up with him. John, John was cousin to Jesus. And Jesus just told him, yeah. You all right. You'll be good. But again, if you go down to verse 11, look how great this is. Jesus said, Matthew 11, verse 11. Truly, I tell you, among those born of women, there has not risen anyone greater than John the Baptist. So Jesus knew you can handle it. Jesus knew uh, Baptist was uh, could handle what he was going through. Because we get our strength from him. 
And if, if he said we can go through it, then we can. If he said this is going to make us stronger, then that's because he knows it's going to make us stronger. If we can only trust him, man, and take, put our pride on the side. I've seen people that have backslided because they lost someone they loved and they, 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 they had hard times accepting that the good Lord can let something like this happen to them. Of course, the good, let, the good Lord let his son die. His son cried. He was like, Father, let this cup, whatever, you know. But I like that prayer so much. Jesus said, let not be my will. But your will, Father, your will be done. So if we're going to walk with the Lord, it has going to, it's going to have to be his will, not our will. If he thinks we have to go through these things, let's go through with his with us. The good thing is he's not going to let us go through it alone. Tribes are going to come. Some of us, most of my... Uh, most of my audience, most of the people that listen to my podcast are people in their 20s. And let me tell you one thing that is guaranteed in life. Troubles are coming. It's a guarantee. No matter how much money you have, some of us will get divorced in the future. Others will die. Others will uh, file bankruptcies. Some will live and lose their parents. Some of us are going to lose their homes, tribes, bad things are going to happen. So are you going to be like John and ask God if it's true? Or are you going to be like Peter and keep your eyes on Jesus and walk on water? Keep your eyes on Jesus. That's what I'm trying to say. No, just allow yourself to be numb. Or be dead on your pride, on the desires of your heart, so God can live in you. He made you. He knows what's good. For, that's what I'm trying to say. That's, he knows what's good for you. And he knows what's good for me. And I'm saying this. This applies to me as much as it applies to you. It's time we humble ourselves. It's time we humble ourselves and bow down to him and praise him. In good times and bad times, he is still worthy to be praised. He took Joseph from jail to being prime minister in one day. Your story is not going to end bad, I'm telling you. He gonna, he's going to say, I truly tell you, among those born of women, there's no one like you. If you can trust him. You know, one thing I know is light comes in the morning. It doesn't matter how dark it was, light is going to come. God is good, man. He will come through when time is right. He will come through when time is right. What all I'm saying is you gotta strengthen your faith. I've been I've been learning. I think that's what God has been trying to teach me. Strengthen my faith in Him. And know that in the bad and the good, He's still God. So one last verse before I go. It's Romans four, Romans chapter four. We're going from verse eighteen to verse twenty. Against all hope, Abraham, Abraham in <clears throat> sorry, against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became the father of many nations. Just as it had been said to him, so shall your offspring be. So shall your offspring be. Without weakening his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. Yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of, of God. But he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. I don't think any, any of us can, has ever gone through what Abraham went through. 
but this guy was faithful. He waited and waited a hundred years. Who in who can believe God that they will have children after they turn a hundred years? But the Bible say he was strengthened in his faith and gave glory to God. The name itself means the father of nations. How are you father of nations knowing very well you don't even have a two-month two child? That's faith. That's, 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 that's the proof that there's no pride in me. That's, that's the exact proof that Abraham had died on pride. That he knew that everything comes from the Lord. And if the Lord said you'll have a child at a hundred years, you will. Man, that's faith. Man, that's faith. This is the kind of faith that I'm praying that you get today. So let your ego go. Let your pride die. And pick up your faith. And believe in God. Know that he can rescue you. Know that he can wash you up. He can clean your sins. Doesn't matter. Your attention is going to end, man. If, if you're still trying to find respect from people... Man, you're way years behind, bro. Years behind. Come on, they make... Bro, just humble yourself and pray. Um, thank you, everyone. You have a good week. Shalom.